Yeah, but but it was made with just two guys. Like that's I mean that's wild. I, I don't understand why you don't want to talk about that. Because people are wary of independent productions. They will psychologically think they won't be as good as your previous big network productions. No, but it's better all around. That's that's the point. I mean, we two guys did what would take an entire floor of people to produce. Like you don't you don't think that's a cool story? Yeah, but you've got to make them think that it's a big network production and then surprise them that it's not. So you want me to lie, Bill? No, we want you to like withhold the truth but like just for now okay hey earthlings paul lafrance here and i am full scale stoked for the launch of my new series back at revolution 14 episode series coming right at you that you get to watch for free yep i'm just giving it away i am so excited about this show it's the most raw and authentic thing i've ever done and it was three years in the making uh because of a big uh, network editor strike and uh and covid Okay, now you've got that out of your system. It's good. What? <laughs> what? Uh, okay, everyone, let's try again. All right, I'm just playing. Take two. We are living in the fastest moving culture in the history of humanity, and people are starting to revolt against the stress. I've joined the revolution by building places of rest for people to relieve that tension, but I often fail under the pressure doing it. Okay, I do have a tendency to be a bit dramatic, but you'll get used to that, since a lot of drama is about to come your way, and every last ounce of it is real. Sure, we are about to build something spectacular that'll be worth the wait to see, but what you need to know up front is there are no actors, no powder, no makeup, and most importantly, no editing out the mistakes. My name is Paul, and I design and build stuff, and I'd like to take a moment to point out how cool I look in this slow motion walk-up. Yes. Now blur me out a bit to hide the wrinkles. Perfect. I've been creating places of rest for my clients for over 20 years, and I love my job. But I'm also overly sensitive, a little pig-headed, a tad neurotic, and I have a deep fear of letting my clients down. So even though I have all the confidence in the world when it comes to bringing a design to life, things always go wrong on every job that can make me feel about as small as I do in this drone shot. And you are gonna be right there when it does. I am here at a property with an absolutely gorgeous backdrop. We've got a conservation area in behind, and this is like the best you could ever hope for as far as a backdrop for a house. And we also have a backyard that looks just about complete. But as far as I'm concerned, this is done. This is going bye-bye, this is going hasta la vista, because this thing was inherited by my clients, Sanjay and Rejma, and there's nothing about it that's really them. It's nothing that tells their story. We got a hot tub and we have some fish, but that's pretty much about it. There's nothing here that inspires them. It is all stone and no heart, and, but the reality is we've got potential coming out of our ears here. We've got this beautiful backdrop. We've got all this open space that is just all stone. So I know that hot tub's gotta move. I know we gotta build something in here. I feel like there's a, a structure that used to go over there. But the one thing that catches my eye right off the bat is the fact that we've got this staircase that is coming out the door. And this is just basically, um, this is like a safety hazard, you know, central. This is, this is a public service announcement right here. When you're walking down this staircase, and leading down to here to the barbecue area, it screams danger. And speaking of the barbecue area, when you've got such a beautiful backdrop, you do not want this prison wall here marking the territory. You want this thing pushed back around the corner to open up this view. So uh, the gazebo is another problem because it looks a little bit on the dated side. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about that. But as far as the rest of the project is concerned, I know what I'm gonna to attempt to do. Typically what I always do, try and blow everybody's mind. But the minds I've really got to focus on are Sanjay and Rejma's. Before I can start designing, however, there are some stigmas about working with a contractor I'd like to tear down. Yes, Sanjay is a dentist. If there's anyone that understands stigmas, it's him. They don't, they haven't met you, but, and often I'll introduce myself and say, hi, my name is Sanjay, and hi, my name is Jack, I don't like you. His wife, Rejma, is a wedding planner, so she knows a thing or two about stressful expectations. Um, there's always stress with wedding planning because there's so much going on and you don't want anything to screw up and there's, something always goes wrong. I've never been to a wedding where nothing goes wrong. I've gone to unusual lengths before to help my clients feel they can trust me with their project, but this is taking things to a whole new level. One of the big problems with the dentistry, it, it does tend to be emotionally unrewarding um, because although we're providing a very good service for people and a necessary service, it is something that's uncomfortable for people. So that's stress, but it's kind of a fun stress. I feel like dentistry stress is a little worse. 
People are just happy that they've lived through the experience. They're not ready to say, thank you for helping me with this. It's more like, thank you that I can get up and walk out of this chair. Sanjay and Rajman know the importance of taking the time to ensure they have the trust of their clients. So I'm going to make it clear that I know how important trust is as well. By first trusting Sanjay to put sharp things in my mouth. I'd say we're on the right path to tearing down stigmas, but there's one more thing I'd like to do if we're really going to bury the hatchet. I've never done this before. This is going to be wild. Uh, have I've you guys never, done it? No, I've never done this before. Uh, I may have studied <laughs> Well, uh, we said that we were going to bring you guys out tonight and have a little bit of fun and uh, also have the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. But to be honest with you, we actually have a confession to make. What we didn't tell you is that we weren't going to be alone. As you might have guessed, I don't build all by my lonesome. I have a crew, and I'll admit at first glance, they might look a little intimidating. And since these boys are not only going to be working outside, but also coming inside the home of my clients, I think it's a good idea that Sanjay and Rejma get to know them like I do. After all, they didn't just hire me, they also hired my team. Doing a project of this size can feel intimidating enough without having to worry about the people building it. So I'd say introductions are in order. This is Mikey, my job site coordinator, who also does pretty much everything else under the sun. Say hi to Dan, my crew foreman and certified genius. Troy, our landscaper extraordinaire, who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Polly, who's been a carpenter since, well, birth. And finally, my right-hand man, Steve, who you're going to get to know really, really well. The biggest thing for me in terms of entering into a relationship with um, any sort of professional in this situation, a contractor, um, is trust. I think the biggest fear of working with a contractor you've never worked with is getting ripped off. Unfortunately, you just never know. Are we getting a good price? Are we not getting good prices? So one of the big decisions for me in terms of why do this project now is trying to create an area where it's also a stress relief for me. So what'll be really nice is we have our own oasis in the back and I can just shut everything else down and use the back deck. I would love to be able to create an area where the second you walk out the door, you leave everything else inside. And regardless of what's out there, you know, if there's just a place to sit or a place to cook or just a place to hang out, it's just a question of walking out that door, closing that door behind you and just appreciate what you have in front of you. I'm not going to say that axe throwing magically created a bond of trust, but it was a nice distraction to help break the ice and calm everyone's nerves. And quite fitting. Because if you can walk away with all your limbs after tossing axes around, I'd say that's a great prep for the grueling months ahead to create an out-of-this-world oasis where a million things can go wrong. So buckle up, because here's what we're building. The first order of business is to build a curved elevated deck with glass railings that will allow for a much easier transition from the house to the new large dining area and a one-of-a-kind curved outdoor kitchen with a unique pergola that will let you grill in the rain. Our hot tub will have a new home with a walkout from the basement to allow for easy access. The upper deck will have an elongated curved staircase leading down to the bridge deck, which nicely encapsulates the lower patio with a fire pit. The bridge deck leads over to the lounge, which will have a second built-in fire feature and a louvered roof system overhead that can open and close depending on the weather. Finally, all roads lead to a stunning four-season room with retractable window walls, a bar, and a high-definition golf simulator. You know, like you do. This project is definitely going to be wild, but before we can start anew, it's out with the old. All right, the insanity starts today. We got uh, Troy and the boys here. We got big machinery coming in because we got trees to take out. We got hot tubs to move. We got barbecue areas to destroy because we got to lay out about 50 footings for the footings to come in two days from now, so there's no time to mess around. <laughs> there is nothing like day one of a large creative project. You can feel the energy and excitement in the air, but thankfully, there's always that little voice in my head that reminds me, don't get cocky, kid. So here's our plan of attack. We have a rather large item that needs to get moved right away, so I really don't want to start the day off by damaging Sanjay and Rejma's hot tub. Today is going to be all about precise measurements. So I will recheck the home dimensions to my plans to make sure nothing catches me by surprise. The next big item that needs to go bye-bye is the old stone barbecue area, which also requires gas and electrical to be disconnected. Those boys are on their way, piece of cake. 
I'll be very happy to see our death trap staircase torn asunder, but my blood's gonna boil if the stone goes to waste, so I plan on repurposing it for the walkout. Even with weeks of prep for day one, I always have a feeling that I'm forgetting something that's gonna make me want to bury my face in the sand. 20 years and I still get first day jitters. The fish pond is a nice feature that's gonna stay as is, even though I'm sure the fish are freaked out right about now. And I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do about that data gazebo that Sanjay and Rajman want me to keep. I'm sure something will come to me. My clients are investing a lot of money in me and I don't wanna let them down, because you are only as good as your last job. And I also have a family to feed, so it's a good thing I have a team I can rely on, as I will need all of the support I can get. Say hello to Troy. He's my landscaper extraordinaire, and he comes with his own army of scruffy guys who obey his every command. He has big toys that occasionally make me feel inferior, but is so polite it almost seems odd. We all swear we've seen him talking to plants. Troy is almost ready to move all of the armor stone and pavers out of the way, so we can repurpose them later. But first things first, we've got a rather large hot tub to move. Remember that sneaky suspicion that I'm forgetting something feeling that I mentioned earlier, and how most times it's just those jitters? Well, today, it's because I'm a dumbass. When planning on moving a hot tub, it's a really good idea to make sure that it's not still holding 450 gallons of water. Nine out of 10 people agree, but today, that 10th guy is me. Yeah, I have nothing to add. A certain someone is really gonna love hearing about this. And while the hot tub is draining and blocking our way, I'll have to now refocus on making a new path to take out the barbecue area first by prematurely removing a bunch of trees as well as trying to distract from my mistake. This existing backyard was really beautifully landscaped, but unfortunately what they didn't pay attention to was the design. You can have something that's got great fit and finish and the great look, but if it doesn't work from a functional perspective, no good. So starting with the staircase, what we're gonna change after we get rid of all of this is first and foremost creating a wonderful transition down that is nice and easy to traverse. We're gonna create a nice big landing two steps down. This whole deck level is gonna be elevated to about here, so you can easily maneuver in and out of the house to the new barbecue, out, new outdoor kitchen, and we're gonna have a dining table that's right here. Whereas in the existing design, you'd be walking down these, you know, the staircase of death. You don't have any room here to eat. The barbecue's there. Then you have to walk across, halfway across the yard to go to your dining table. So great look, bad design is like oil and water. So we're gonna kinda go with the good look and the good design and the bad acidness as well, thrown in. Uh. Up against the side and... Is it draining? Yeah, I just turned it on. All right. So wait, 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 wait. Did it just start? Yeah, it just started. I may have, uh, I may have nearly broken your shovel. I always end up with this wooden, this, this shovel that I, is on the verge of breaking. Sometimes I just, sometimes I just use too much of my raw power. Uh, yeah, because we can go, I think, any, yeah, anything, anything along the fence line here. I, it's not my fault. Torque, this, this will break. I don't want to break the shovel. I said, if I'm going to get a dog, I have to get a dog that can rival my own energy. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, let's get it. I feel like I'm about to kill that thing. It's, hang on, let me test this one. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh. It just broke my knee. Well, I say we ignore this tree right now because it's boring me. But this one looks exciting. One, two, 50, 79, 103, 104. How about, uh, how about we back away? Sorry, little bees. We're very sorry. Nice. Yeah. That tree is absolutely stuffed with hornets. I think this is one of those things mom said not to do. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Where's my EpiPen? So far, so good. With the hornet tree safely out of the way, we can now get around the hot tub without risking damage. One more tree to save till we reach the old barbecue zone. I don't know about you guys, but if you look at a tree like that, does that not remind you of a sunset? It's just like a sunset. It's just, I find it very soothing. You? I'd like to not kill that tree. Let's not, maybe not kill that tree. Anyway, that was a, 
That was a deck, a deck builder and a landscaper sharing a beautiful moment. Considering the fact it would cost a pretty penny to buy a beautiful tree this size new, we're not going to let it be hurt. It's okay, don't be frightened. Even if saving it is slowing us down. It's always worth relocating existing mature plants rather than waiting for new plants to grow. I told you it'd be okay. Now that our gentle tree saving mission is complete, it's time to unleash hell on the old barbecue zone. We're already behind schedule, so we can show no mercy. All right, so we're almost ready to get this whole barbecue zone dismantled. First thing we gotta do is take this B store here. We're gonna cut right through the existing stone and then hopefully be able to lift these up in two big sections, get them out of the way so we can clear all of this out, excavate all of this earth, replant some of it over there, and then hopefully take out that tree without harming it. It's a beautiful Japanese maple, but first things first. Now that we've removed all the pavers from the old barbecue zone and built a ramp for Troy to drive up to get his forks under the concrete foundation, this should get us back on schedule for marking out our 50 footings. We're ready to cut through the stone and have removed the old grill. But just like the slow draining hot tub, it's becoming painfully apparent to me that this is going to take a lot longer than I thought. All right, so we ran into a little bit of a snag. Uh, our, our massive existing barbecue, which is just supposed to get cut in half, piece of cake, in my mind, is now uh, it's turning out to be a big, big pain in the ass. So it's not cutting in half. We can't take it out in one piece. We have a gas line here that we have the gas turned off. Now we have our gas go here. So, you know, we're not blowing up any neighborhoods. That's usually a good idea. Uh, but we have no idea this could be solved in five minutes. It could be solved in five hours. So, you know, here's hoping. Just part of the game, man. Just part of the game. You know what? Just leave it there. I'll build around it. Yes. There you go. This is ridiculous. Uh, uh. Let's let's cut it. I just think we still got a hot tub to move. Managed to remember that part this time. When transplanting a tree, it's best to wait till the tree is dormant. If the tree is still awake, like this Japanese maple, you want to be very careful not to sever any major roots. Ideally, it's best to transplant the tree right away, so it's a good thing that we already have this one's new home prepped and ready for a quick move. Now that the last of the old stone counter carnage has been taken away, it's time to face the moment that I just knew was coming. Say hi to Steve. He's the ying to my yang, the ebony to my ivory, and the basketball to my baseball. Wait. He's a killer designer and the man directly responsible for making sense of the visions in my head. He's afraid of planes, cat litter, and most human foods. All right, so the hot tub is disconnected and we are ready to move her to her new home. Okay, so the hot tub is disconnected now. Zoran was here, he's gone. Yeah, electrician's gone. Um, there's a reason why we started over at the barbecue station and uh, didn't uh, move the hot tub first. You talked to Troy, didn't you? Uh, maybe. Okay, look, man. You, I, I, uh, bro, <laughs> bro, all I want to say is you have one job. I know. Okay, look. One job. I, 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 I don't. Look, if you're not here, I can't be expected to remember everything. Putting this all on me. So I've been working with Paul for 15, 16 years now. And uh, him and I have this sort of banter that we do back, at, well, more, mostly me. I will kind of banter a little bit with him. Let me, let me give you a, an idea of who Steve is. Steve's been with me for 16 years. He's my best buddy. He's my right-hand man. He is my creative guru, but also my administrator. And what you need to understand is that the way Steve keeps himself entertained is he is the ultimate antagonist. He has this issue with, you know, kind of dropping things on you kind of last minute. And he likes to try and just to get a rise out of people, just to kind of see what they'll react to. You know, and, and he won't admit uh, when he's, you know, kind of dropped the ball a little bit on something. So in order for me to get back at him, I'll be an antagonist, absolutely. The thing is, I don't react to anything. I don't, he doesn't get a rise out of me. He's never been able to get a rise out of me but it doesn't keep him from trying. A lot of times I'll, you know, pick the side of an argument where I don't even believe, remotely believe in the argument that I'm trying to push or prove. I think one day he's expecting that I'll react and I'm never gonna react, it's never gonna happen. Like, for instance, he'll 
go on and on about, you know, feed the hungry children of the world. And of course, I'll basically pick the other side and I'll say starve them. Even though I don't believe it necessarily, but you know, I've, I've got to do something in order to combat his, his lack and disregard of my time and the ability for him to, you know, at least say that he was wrong just even once. Of course, this is going to give him fuel to keep trying, but uh, so far so good. Now that you see what I have to deal with, do I really need to explain why I hope to keep the whole hot tub draining thing on the down low? Exactly. You feel my pain. But now that we have a fully drained tub, we have one final mission before we can break out the blueprints and get down to real business. Is it too much to ask that this goes smoothly? Okay, so uh, Troy and the boys have the hot tub all hooked up. It's got to go from here all the way to the other side. And uh, I, I have faith that this is going to go really, really smooth. I'm not always right, but I always have faith. All right, let's go for it. See, piece of cake. It's kind of like taking the space shuttle to the launch pad, except that Troy is known as being a very fast driver. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not, no, it's OK. I, I, I can fully admit that I just peed a little bit there. There's one thing that working with Paul may make me a little bit concerned about, and that's just his level of creativity. Honestly, the biggest thing is he is very creative, and that's what I think sets him apart from other people, is that vision. I am not gonna lie. That's okay, I can, t I can afford to replace a $15,000 hot tub. Sometimes I'm concerned that there may be some ideas that he may throw out there. Is it gonna, are we in danger of hitting this rock at all? And the problem is, once he presents you, and as, as, as we go, there's just more and more ideas. Oh God which may not necessarily be me or us. Oh yeah, don't worry. We totally got it with our arms. And my problem is once I've heard the idea, I want to do it. Because I've seen some of his stuff and some of his stuff is just out there and it's like, well, I don't want that because that's just not me. Well, it just goes to show that even though we have cut through some major stigmas to get this job started, I always need to remind myself that not all my ideas are the right ones. So did day one go smoothly? I would say that's a resounding no. But we now have a clean slate, 50 footings marked out, and one hell of a build ahead of us that will lead to one of the biggest nail-biting reveals in the history of humanity. Okay, small exaggeration. But we are talking about giving Sanjay and Rejma the place of rest they have longed for for years in a world that's gone crazy. No pressure. I feel like I'm at the bottom of a mountain with a huge boulder I need to push to the top. I just hope it doesn't roll back on me. We got rocks galore to get out of the way because we got to get to. I'm going to start that over. Crime fighting is getting a lot more tiring, and uh, but I'm going to think deeply now about my future endeavors. Yes. Mm. Now. I'm slowly beginning to regain my powers. You make me want to be a better man. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Where you put those coffee cups? So, um... But uh, right now they're they're all out front talking about their favorite TV shows, landscapers. It's so important. It's uh, it's a nice day. It's you're out here by your, your big manly equipment. But um, I was wondering if we can do some tearing out back there now. You guys, you guys we won't use any of this. I'm not gonna be making fun of them on camera. <laughs> Go take a break, and then I'm gonna come out and make fun of you.